So from a modeling and simulation standpoint on the EDA side, which method would you use? Would you use a frequency domain method or a time domain method? And this is what I'm going to focus on in this segment of the seminar. So what are the objectives? I'm going to demonstrate the importance of modeling RPDs both in frequency and time and discuss details of one of the methods over here, what we call as the multi-layered finite difference method, which was a method developed at Georgia Tech. And then I'll try to compare this with other methods in the context of signal and power integrity analysis and then show you how you can convert now from frequency to time and look at the simulation of signal lines in the presence of power distribution networks, look at effects both at the layout level as well as at the system level. So the question is, given the kinds of effects we want to look at, what is the right modeling and simulation flow? So when you look at analyzing the signal lines in the presence of power distribution networks, that there are two kinds of analysis that we are interested in. One is on the DC side, and the second one is more on the AC or the transient side. So the AC and the transient part of this analysis is what I'm going to focus on on the segment, which translates into what happens as a function of frequency as well as as a function of time. Now when you look at layout level RPD effects, these effects are best addressed in the frequency domain. And part of the reason is when you're trying to do a layout, you want to be able to figure out the frequencies at which you have a problem, either a very increased insertion loss or a high impedance between the power and ground planes so that you can place the capacitors at the right position. And whenever you look at a frequency domain analysis at the layout level, you will find that computationally it is the least expensive thing to do. Or in other words, you can iterate back and forth to come up with a layout that has next to no RPDs if that is your desire. Once you have done that, that only addresses the layout level RPD. So you now have to convert that into the time domain. And for that, you have to be, have the ability to convert drivers to the interconnects that you have in the package and the printed circuit board. And one way to do that is through a technique that we call as macro modeling that takes the frequency response that we have generated for at the layout level and you can convert that into a type of transfer function or a spice netlist. And once you have the spice netlist, you can now embed in a spice type of circuit simulator, connect your drivers to it, and you can now look at your system level RPD effects. The key thing over here is that anything that you do in the frequency domain is invariably inexpensive from a computational standpoint. Anything you do in the time domain tends to be very, very expensive because you invariably have to start from zero time. And that is the reason why whenever you do any level of optimization of a package or a PCB, you want to focus as much as possible on the frequency side of things, and once you get most of them right, then you switch to the time domain, and hopefully the number of iterations you need to go through is minimized when you look at the system level RPD effects. Or in other words, from a modeling and simulation standpoint, you want to first work in the frequency domain, you need to have the ability to convert from frequency to time, and then you want to be able to work in the time domain and that should cover the entire flow you need to be able to understand and design uh, the signal and signal lines in the presence of power distribution structures to ensure that you have minimum amount of RPD effects.